All right, welcome back to the big boy, to a special edition where we look at Vassal, we look at a computer screen. But we're actually doing some a little bit different, a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit of fun, who knows? Well, it depends on how good my editing capabilities are. So we're looking at Proud Monster Deluxe, no less. It's a Thai Bomber uh, original design that was revised by Don Johnson. No, not the Miami Vice guy because that would be way too cool. And if I was clever, I'd insert the Miami Vice music right here, but then we'd get copyright banned and you wouldn't get to see the video. So what are we gonna do? I thought what we might do is walk through a quick look at the Soviet setup <clears throat> and my rational, my, my uh, rationale for how I'm doing stuff and what I'm doing and uh, see how that goes. Some of this will be sped up, uh, significantly, and the rest of it will be you know, me uh, providing a little bit of uh, color commentary where possible. At least that's what I hope to be able to do with, uh, with the video, so we'll see how it goes. So let's uh, have a quick look at the map. Uh, each red hex that you can see here with my, uh, that's just been highlighted there, is a Stalagrad uh, fortified zone or defensive line. They're going to provide you with uh, some uh, column shifts on defense, all the usual stuff. The, the German forces start off with some significant advantages in the first turn. They don't pay for river crossing uh, costs. They get a discount on their cost for doing overruns or mobile assaults. And there are a number of other benefits that they, they uh, receive. And of course, the Soviets are basically hamstrung and surprised and don't get to do a whole lot. So with this game, if you're not familiar at all, you're dealing with a lot of the... Uh, issues uh, the, the game has this uh, no zone to control deal so you got to have everything kind of you know lined up you don't want people sneaking through and uh, breaking through the line so the setup kind of guides you a little bit and enforces a, a border uh, along the borderline you know every every hex has to be occupied and all that sort of fun stuff and then further south you'll you'll see some changes there that allows you to have less units uh, per uh, per along the border, et cetera, et cetera. But let's have a look at the, let's just let this kind of play out a little bit and we'll reconvene once uh, something interesting pops up, up back on the screen. Okay, so here you can see in the south, <clears throat> what I'm trying to avoid is this, uh, uh, is that eighth or sixth? I can't read it because I don't have my glasses on. Let's find those. Sixth and uh, first panzer group. What we're trying to avoid, there's a massive pile of units that are gonna be here. They're gonna blow through either, uh, you know, a one or three hex wide gap and That'll probably uh, constitute, be constituted by a mobile assault and an attack, and then some reserve units moving through, and they may mobile, mobile assault as well. So the idea would be that we're, we're happy to lose all of these units along this river line here, uh, and then forestall any further advance in the first turn, the first week of the first turn. Uh, well, I guess technically it's the second but whatever, uh, uh, then uh, have them have to attack here and then end their movement and advance into these hexes and really get ideally no further than this north-south barrier here. And then they'll have to start again, right? And, and, and focus on attacking the next line of defense. Similarly here, just in case uh, this 11th Army group that can stage anywhere along here, just in case they uh, elect, well, actually they can they start here, but they can move up and try and attack across the river. We don't want them to capture this city here too easily, nor do we want them to bust through this river line and 
and head for Kiev and grab an easy uh, two two points, two VPs. Keeping in mind that the, the first full game turn, if you capture, I think it's four VP hexes, it's game over, right? It's auto victory. And uh, auto victories are embarrassingly bad, uh, especially in the first turn. Not so bad second, third, fourth turn, but after that, you know, then it's uh, it's all up for grabs. But so we don't want that to have anything like that to happen down there. Similarly here, we want to work out how we're going to protect this uh, VP hex. You can see the VP hex is here. That's the one, that's the two. And then uh, there's a whole bunch here that have to be guarded pretty effectively. Then there's a couple of easies here. There's Riga, uh, Canal, Cal, uh, Canals, whatever it is here. And then Minsk is here for one. So we want to try and fill these areas up with units. And so we force the enemy to make as many attacks as possible. So not sure uh, how much you actually saw or, or that I edited out, but uh, every hex row here now has to have four units in the, the column. And so this, this, these four units here, we've got to place them anywhere along that column row. And every hex row from here to there has to have four, a minimum of four units. Every city and major city has to be uh, or major town, whatever it's called, ha has to have one at least one unit in it. And so for me, you know, logically, I wanted to, you know, let's allocate all the weak units first, see where we can sort of make stacks, and then, you know, putting the crappy, crappy stuff up the back and the better stuff up the front, and then rearranging it as we go to uh, see if we can build sort of, you know, army groups or, or uh, uh, some sort of, you know, force that might be a viable counterattack formation. So I managed to harvest five uh, armored divisions and one uh, motorized division uh, so far. And then I kept most of the, of the brigades free so that we can kind of uh, swap them in and out as we need to. And you'll see as I, as I lay this out, I make some adjustments uh, as we go along the way. But basically, there are some areas we want to protect uh, more than others, and we'll rotate units in and out of these. For me, this was just a nice logical way to have a look at how you know how these forces could potentially be laid out or grouped together. But then you've got to spread them vertically, I guess, or north-south uh, across the map. All right, let's have a look and see what happens. See if I can do this. Let me see if I can do this. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure that's going to work. Let's just see.
All right, let's zoom in and have a look at this now and see what uh, exactly what went down. I'm set up in the north. You can see that up around Leningrad, etc. We don't have a whole lot of forces uh, up there, but we have put units in positions that will slow down advances. So the Germans are not going to be able to race units through here in the first turn, and then in the second turn just barrel on up to Narva. They're going to have to fight their way through this area, and hopefully, you know, we'll get some sort of movement action going on there, and we'll be able to, you know, do some mild interdiction in this area here. No point heavily guarding Leningrad, but we do have the ability to kind of shuttle units from the right-hand side of the map into Leningrad and allow these guys to migrate over towards Narva and go from there. In the center of the uh, area, uh, looking at uh, Eighth Army down through Third Army area, I wanted to build, you know, basically two lines here. So there's the first line on the border that's mandatory, then a second line that try to take advantage of some of the fortified, excuse me, fortified zones around canals. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and then from there, how do we protect Vilnius and keep it relatively safe, if possible, for on, on the first and second turn from, you know, uh, smart play by the Germans, allowing, you know, assuming they're going to get three or four attacks. So that's the idea there. I also didn't want them to just race willy-nilly through this woods hex here where they'd pay two movement points, right? We want them to have to stop fight and then move on. So I, I've, I've allocated a heavy amount of armor to the northern flank of Minsk here. Uh, there is a, a gap here, obviously, but that's by uh, choice, arguably. <laughs> and uh, and then, of course, uh, over by Vitebsk, uh, a double line by Vitebsk as well. Minsk, I wanted to, uh, south of the, the river here, we wanted to build a line across this open terrain from Baranovich uh, 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 Vichy, Vichy here, and uh, not allow just the easy push if they do manage to get one, two, three, push through here <clears throat> and uh, hit Minsk. We don't want that to happen either. Rather than defending Minsk heavily and making Minsk the fighting focal point, I think the way this game system works best is if we actually guard the outskirts in the first couple of turns, let the Germans have to fight there. It doesn't matter if we lose those units necessarily, but what we want to then be able to do is bring other units uh, that are in the background forward then into Minsk, and then build, you know we fight the good fight in Minsk and around Minsk, uh, then arguably we'll bring all these forces that are uh, west of Moscow, uh, in between 20th Army and Smolensk, and we'll push them forward to cover Smolensk as these units are, you know, wiped out by the overwhelming German Schwerpunkt, right? Similar, down here, if we can create some pockets, you know, all this armor here, right? They're, they're, it's, that's all mandatory, right? I've got to have this stuff in these certain areas. I've kind of clustered stuff together. I've kept a little cluster of three divisions here. Hopefully we can, you know, maybe make some sort of counterattack. Any step we can take off of a Panzer unit or a motorized armored unit or whatever the mechanized unit, it's gravy. So we want to be able to do that. And uh, these units are the free units. We can either put them on the line and let them die first turn, or we can let them uh, have a chance at uh, uh, being alive second turn, uh, possibly, right? They're going to get pushed by second panzer group and third panzer group pretty hard. This is a really nasty little pinch point here. Not a lot of point in having a big old stack because it just attracts two big old stacks to attack you. So I'm going for the, you have to attack me here, then here, then here, then here, then here to get through. So that's one, two, three, four, five attacks or one, two, three attacks and four attacks to try and get through to this. So hopefully uh, mitigating the ability to get to Ghana you know, uh, those quick VPs, et cetera, et cetera. All right, down in the, what have we got here? Fifth Army, Sixth Army, 12th and 26th. Same story, I already mentioned that stuff there. Kind of scattered down here, but turn one, nothing happens. And I'm hoping I get a move in here and we'll, we'll uh, 
will reinforce uh, Kishinev and uh, the surrounds and, and hope for the best. We'll also try and put some further units out here, perhaps down in 3043, 3044 to uh, slow down any advance on Odessa and, uh, and, and dull, the, dull the potential pain there. Try to protect these cities. Uh, last time I played this, the one of these, they weren't left open, but they were left under defended. And uh, I managed, I just, uh, when I played, I, I attacked these cities with, you know, one division. Uh, most of them I failed at, but you get enough attacks in, eventually you're going to be successful. And that's how we got the quick win uh, in turn two. And then uh, obviously this zone here, lots of units around this area. You might as well cluster these guys. Same around Rostov. We've got a clustering going on over there. Uh, not too much down Sevastopol. I, you know, the intention would be to uh, naval ship all this stuff over into the Odessa area very quickly, and then as reinforcements come in, we will look for an opportunity to reinforce this. At, uh, as they come through. So that's kind of the defensive plan. If we scroll across a little bit, this is Stalingrad here. A bunch of units down here, but the intention would be, you know, arguably to kind of push those up towards the RVG, uh, RVGK and uh, allow them to be transferred around as needed and we'll kind of look at it that's basically it from there so we'll see what our opponent comes up with in terms of an attack plan and we'll go for it from there so i'll uh, take care and look forward to talking to you soon